Every day, 830 women die from preventable causes related to pregnancy and childbirth, and 99% of those women live in developing countries. More than a quarter of all maternal deaths are due to postpartum hemorrhage. Overall, at least 5% of women will have a significant postpartum hemorrhage. With knowledge and expertise, the majority of bad outcomes associated with postpartum hemorrhage can be avoided using basic medications, skills, and equipment. In this short video, we would like to review the steps that can be taken to improve maternal outcomes from postpartum hemorrhage. First, let's talk about the initial steps that should be taken. After delivery of the baby, misoprostol or oxytocin should be administered to help the uterus to contract. The placenta should be delivered and examined to ensure that it is intact. The uterus should be massaged. If there is excessive bleeding, an examination should be done to ensure that there are no retained pieces of placenta in the uterus. The cervix and vagina should be examined to determine if there is a bleeding laceration. Other medications, such as further oxytocin, misoprostol, or ergometrine, should be administered if available. If, despite these efforts, the uterus remains poorly contracted and bleeding, a uterine balloon tamponade should be inserted. The uterine balloon tamponade can be used as definitive treatment of postpartum hemorrhage or to safely transport a patient to another facility for more definitive care. It can be inserted by midwives, nurses, and physicians, and is easily assembled with affordable materials. It is important that skilled birth attendants know when and how to insert a balloon tamponade. A kit should be readily available, such that it can be assembled quickly and easily. Here we demonstrate an example of a kit and what it should contain. A urinary catheter or Foley catheter, condoms, string or suture material, sterile water, a syringe and basin, gloves, sponge forceps, a speculum, and a light source. Once the decision has been made to insert the balloon tamponade, hands should be washed with soap and water or sanitizer gloves put on, and the balloon assembled. The condom must be removed from its wrapper and unrolled. The Foley catheter is then inserted into the condom and tied on with string or suture material. Once secure, it should be inserted into the uterus. This can be done by feel or with the help of a speculum and light source. Once placed in the vagina, the Foley bulb is inflated with 50 mils of clean or sterile water. This helps to keep the device in place. Using the second port, the condom is then filled with sterile water by drawing water into the syringe and injecting it into the second port. Approximately 500 mils of fluid can be placed in the condom. The condom must be inflated enough to apply pressure to bleeding vessels in the uterus, resulting in reduced blood loss. Once inflated, a pack can be placed in the vagina to keep the Foley in the uterus. The balloon is left in place for up to 24 hours and then gradually deflated. One dose of prophylactic antibiotics may be administered after insertion of the balloon. In addition to the balloon tamponade, the World Health Organization has recommended the use of tranexamic acid, and this can be administered once the balloon has been inserted. The patient must be checked regularly to ensure that the bleeding has subsided. This means taking regular vital signs. Lives can be saved by recognizing that bleeding is excessive after delivery, administering appropriate medications, and using this simple device to reduce blood loss. 
With skilled management of postpartum hemorrhage, we can reduce maternal mortality.